Hello everyone. Today I discuss uh, the gingival recession. It consists of three parts. In this lecture I, ex I explain the part one which is the etiology and then surgical management. Actually here we found here we see the normal anatomy of the gingiva clinically we see here this dotted line gingival margin or free gingiva and this white to pale color which is attached gingiva and this non keratinized part which is the mucosa Gingival recession is a common finding in many patients. Some patients will not be concerned while others will have aesthetic concern or complain of sensitivity. Today we highlight on the etiology of the gingival recession and the treat treatment option available for treating the aesthetic part and sensitivity which is uh, followed after gingival recession. Gingival recession is the displacement of the gingival soft tissue margin the displacement of gingival margin is the displacement of the gingival soft tissue margin apical to the cemento enamel junction when it runs down from the free gingiva downward uh, it's named gingival recession and it will result in the exposure of the root surface exposure of the root surfaces as we see here and this may lead to aesthetic concern aesthetic concern aesthetic problems or sensitivity sensitivity problems Yes. Let us discuss the etiology of the gingival recession. The etiology of gingival recession include either direct mechanical or physical influences on the gingival tissue or indirect due to inflammatory reaction in the gingival tissue. So it may be direct through either mechanical mechanical or physical or it may be indirect due to inflammatory process inflammatory due to inflammation so let's talk about the mechanical and physical factors these include these factors include etiological factors which cause direct apical migration of the gingival tissue so these are direct causes let us remove this and talk about the mechanical and physical causes which are direct factors
First of all, we have vigorous, vigorous, hard brushing, hard brushing technique. When somebody use a hard toothbrush, like here, despite the doctor said to him, told him not to brush too hard. Uh, but I don't think so. I think now she fo he forced on the teeth to get a clean teeth, but uh, unfortunately he may get a gingival recession. So this is a common cause of recession, and it's often seen in patients with good oral hygiene. It usually presents as localized area of recession, mainly affecting the buccal aspects of individual teeth. Or it may affect a group of teeth and will have wedge shaped, and it will have wedge shaped, as here, wedge shaped defect with minimal interproximal recession. So you mostly find it in patients with good oral hygiene and uh, as a wedge shape on the labial or buccal surfaces of the affected teeth. For the majority of people, the area of recession is more commonly associated with left side of their mouth. This is directly related to the fact that most of the people uh, are right-handed so it's, it's mostly in the right-handed affect affecting the left sides while in the left-handed affecting the right side as the right-handed will firstly wash the left side so it will uh, he will or she will exert too much forces on this side. <coughs> the gingival tissues often appear to be healthy around the area of recession. When you see the gingival tissues around the area of recession, you find that it seems to be healthy. <coughs> and the exposed root surface is smooth. The exposed root surfaces is smooth, clean and polished. Buccal abrasion cavities may also be found with the area of recession. Usually class 5 recession, class 5, sorry, class 5 cavities, as we see here, for example here, you see class 5 cavities like here for example so you find the healthy gingiva but sometimes uh, you see the class 5 cavities in the area of recession Secondly, traumatic incisal relationship. Traumatic incisal relationship. This also can cause stripping of the gingival tissue. As sometimes in class class two division one and class two division two orthodontic orthodontic uh, cases you find the upper incisor teeth are impinging over uh, the lower gingival tissue and the lower exerting or impinging forces on the palatal sides 
uh, of the upper incisal areas. So you find recession in uh, incisal relationship, traumatic incisal relationship in these cases. So this is another cause. Other causes, uh, there, was, uh, there was research uh, proving that uh, one that piercing lower lip may get a recession. Similarly, poorly designed denture born tissues, like here, this is a place for partial denture, this patient weird, a partial denture, and uh, he end up with the recession of the adjacent tooth borne part partial denture and results in a stripping of the gingival tissue li leaving a recession. So this is another cause of gingival recession, mechanical cause, physical. Also, teeth which are prominent in the arch. If we take this, we find that in case of prominent teeth, in case of prominent teeth, this teeth is out of the ridge, the patient may uh, suffer from a thin gingiva and thin buccal plate over this tooth and this will end up with a localized dehiscence and may end up with the recession this may end up with a recession we find this on this condition on this tooth. We see here a high frenal attachment or named aberrant frenal attachment. It's mentioned as another cause of recession due to an apical pull of the gingival tissue. This will pull the gingival tissue downward. However, the evidence for this is poor. But it's a fact that a high frenal attachment may cause a gingival recession. especially when the frenum is close to the gingival margin as we see here so this make an oral hygiene difficult by the patient and it may lead to a localized periodontal problem and subsequent recession so this condition is preferable to be treated uh, either by frenotomy or phrenectomy either with a hand instrument or with a laser to prevent a subsequent recession on the adjacent teeth because it will lead to localized periodontal problem which may extend to the adjacent teeth also we have recession due to iatrogenic factors Sometimes patients come to your clinic and say that I did a filling but now I do have sensitivity. If you examine the area and you found and you find a gingival recession, one of the differential diagnosis for this uh, you may think about the uh, the overhang filling like here for example here 
and this may end up with the recession around the filling which is poorly fitted or have an excess making a gingiva unable to adapt well to the tooth surface and make an area for the breeding organisms to grow up so this is another causes for gingival recession sometimes also successful treatment successful treatment of the periodontal disease and gingivitis will also lead to apical movement of the gingival margin in some cases especially when there is a shallow periodontal pocket repeated root planning also can also result in resorption of the crystal bone and gingival recession so sometime maybe the iatrogenic factors may be the cause behind recession sometimes when you do a successful scaling and polishing and root planing you end up with the uh, gingival recession let us jump to the other causes the second type of cause the second cause of gingival recession which is indirect gingival recession caused by an inflammatory process there are various predisposing factors which can result in recession due to inflammation of the gingival tissue and these include one of them is the gingival biotype gingival biotype the height of keratinized tissue the height of keratinized tissue is not an important factor in, in predicting recession the height this height is not judging the recession however evidence shows the thickness of keratinized tissue if we have the tooth here and we have gingiva here and bone I am not good in painting but I'll try my best the thickness the thickness the thickness of the keratinized tissue is an important prognostic factor Because subgingival plaque result in presence of inflammation around the gingival margin. The plug will be here, will rest here, around the gingival margin, around the tooth neck. This area of inflammation rarely extends more than 1 to 2 mm apically and laterally. Therefore, where the free gingival tissue is thick, only a small area of connective tissue affected if the thickness of the gingiva is too much and it is not thin so the inflammatory process here this is the root surface the plug found here will affect 
a minimum amount of connective tissue right here you have a bulk of connective tissue so you just end up with the small area of connective tissue affected by the inflammation however where the free gingival tissue is thin when you have a thin gingival tissue for example like here when you have plug and this is a connective tissue when you have a plug this may affect a larger amount of connective tissue and will end up end up with the inflammatory gingival tissue and subsequent gingival recession so the thickness of gingiva is very important let us clean this to explain the other causes the second one second cause is the periodontal disease periodontal disease periodontal disease it is the common cause of recession which results in the loss of supporting bone around the tooth. Usually teeth affected by periodontal disease will lose bone around the tooth through an inflammatory reaction which results in apical migration of the soft tissue margin. If we have gingiva here, we have supporting bone. Sorry, supporting bone here. And this is a road surface. When you have a loss, when you have a loss of bone here this gingiva will come down here and you will end up with the recession in the periodontal disease and these patients are likely to show generalized sign of recession on all surfaces of the teeth interproximal buccal lingual or palatal. Another cause we have poor fitted margin, like we see here. Poor marginal fit, an inadequate crown emergence angle, rough restoration and overhang restoration this will lead to trapping of the plug in these areas this will breed the plug in this area and this can cause gingival inflammation if the patient is not meticulous with their oral hygiene and, subsequent, and subsequently it will lead to a recession of the gingival tissue recession of the gingival tissue Orthodontic tooth movement it will not cause recession by itself. Orthodontic movement it will not cause recession by itself. However, orthodontic movement of teeth labially labially as we see here as we see here for example 
once uh, moved labially outside the envelope of alveolar bone it will result in loss of buccal bone and it may end up with the alveolar dehiscence and a, a decrease in gingival tissue thickness due to stretching of the gingival tissue fiber will end up with the recession as we talked about and if you have a thin gingival margin also this will end up with the alveolar dehiscence and the subsequent gingival recession so the orthodontic treatment is another cause for gingival recession so the pressure from the orthodontic movement should be equalized on both sides to maintain the tooth with the within the envelope of the alveolar ridge let us talk about the patient complaint and concern gingival recession is a common feature in many patients some patients will be unaware of the condition while other concern it as a big problem and he or she want to be corrected patients tend to present with three main concerns which are poor aesthetic poor aesthetic poor aesthetic second worrying about potential tooth loss third patient concern is about hypersensitivity or it's more correct to say sensitivity because hypersensitivity is a disease of general health sensitivity So the patient's main concern or make the patient's main complaint is for these three purposes regarding gingival recession, regarding poor aesthetic, potential tooth loss and sensitivity. In order to treat recession and address the patient's aesthetic concern, it's important to have an understanding of gingival aesthetic and the lip line. When considering aesthetic, we must first assess the patient's lip line. This should be done at rest. While the patient is talking and when the patient smiles to show the highest level of the lip line. The key feature to note are the symmetry in the smile and the amount of the tissue visible and the amount of gingival show. Once an extra oral assessment of the aesthetic has been completed, then a closer look at the oral tissue can be carried out. This involves initially looking at the teeth to see which teeth are present their position in the arch and the symmetry between the two sides followed by a, by an assessment of the gingival tissue so first the clinical significance of recession First,
the exposed roots are more prone to caries exposed root will end up with caries sorry with caries Second, clinical significance, the tooth, is, the tooth is become sensitive due to wearing or cementing sensitivity. And third, the interproximal recession may cause food accumulation, plug and bacteria. So interproximal, interproximal session make a breathing area, breathing And bacteria and bacteria so these three are the clinical significance of recession we have two situations regarding the gingival recession one of them is named Stillman cleft Stillman cleft are apostrophe shaped indentations extending from and into the gingival margin for varying distance We may see this is this is the Stillman cleft as we see here. It may be localized or generalized or sorry maybe simple like that or maybe compound on many teeth. One to two may be present in relation to a single tooth. A single tooth may show two clefts, for example, from here, here, or here. One to two seen on the facial aspects and considered to be the result from occlusal trauma. Mostly or it's all, almost always on the facial aspect and considered to be a result from occlusal trauma. Margins of the cleft margins of the cleft are rolled underneath the linear gap in the gingiva and the remaining gingiva is blunt instead of knife edge. This gingiva here is rolled underneath the linear gap and it will become blunt headed in spite of a knife edge normal gingiva. Sometimes Pathological pockets with ulcerative process are also seen in relation to these clefts. So, ulceration and pockets usually follow these 
situation these cliffs and as I said it must it may be simple or compound simple simple like that or compound like that the length of the cleavage or the length of the split this split the length may vary from slight break in gingival margin to depth of 5 to 6 millimeter or more maybe just small like that or it may extend 5 to 6 millim 5 to 6 millimeter sorry to 6 millimeter the other situation is named McCall's festoon as we see here these folds McCall's festoons are life preserver shaped enlargement of gingival margin these are life preserver shaped enlargement of gingival margin frequently occur on the facial aspect of canine and premolars frequently present on the canine and premolars the color and consistency of the gingiva are normal they are normal in early stage and change according to the inflammatory change in advanced stages so this is regarding this two situation which cause recession on the gingival tissue one of them is Stillman cleft and other is McCall's festoon let us jump let us jump to the treatment the treatment option and the aim of the treatment for gingival recession should be to address the patient concern as we talked about it's either sensitivity and or aesthetic the treatment option available are monitor first monitoring and prevention uh, every checkup uh, from every checkup you monitor the, the gingival overall gingival health and you prevent this situation by giving uh, good instructions prescribing uh, oral hygiene aids specify for the condition of the patient so you prevent the condition second using desensitizing agents and varnish and dentin bonding agents these are desensitizing agents or sometimes you use composite as in this case a composite reason for restoring the recession you hide the area of recession with a composite reason like here here you find the recession and here you close the recession with the composite reason filling pink porcelain or composite you have pink porcelain or composite in form of a gingival mask sometimes as you see here patient having gingival recession here 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 
and you by producing a mask named a gingival mask or uh, with a pink porcelain this is a pink porcelain or composite or pink, pink composite you may hide this recession area and you may end up with the area covered with this mask and it will appear as normal gingiva other treatment option is orthodontic treatment in which teeth which may be malpositioned buccally labially through development may have a buccal dehiscence and associated recession as discussed previously this is often seen in buccally placed lower incisor teeth where there is crowding of the lower labial segment in some cases surgical intervention and grafting may help to treat the recession defect however if orthodontic treatment is an option that the patient is willing to consider then any surgical intervention should be delayed until after orthodontic tooth movement has been completed studies studies have shown that orthodontic movement of the tooth lingually allows alveolar bone growth on the buccal aspect and it will thicken the gingival tissue and subsequent coronal shift in the gingival margin resulting in correction of the recession defect if following orthodontic treatment surgical intervention is still indicated the outcome is likely to have higher predictability than if it was performed before orthodontic treatment so it's preferable to consider orthodontic treatment before surgical option in conclusion gingival recession is often seen in, in the patients presenting to the general dental practitioner, periodontist or restorative specialist. Many of these patients can often be treated simply by employing the non-surgical techniques which we discussed above. But in some cases surgical intervention may be necessary and subsequent lecture that I will discuss it in the uh, second and third parts uh, in my series for treating the gingival recession uh, will aim to discuss the surgical management of recession thank you for your listening this is the end of the lecture